Before we get into the video, I need you guys to do me a favour. Number one, like the video. Also, comment. Let me know your thoughts on the story. Glasgow's Jimmy Boyle resided in the roughest part of Glasgow, the notorious Gorbals. Self described as an enforcer, a moneylender, and a menace, that have given at least a dozen people Mars bars, kneecappings, and also been on both ends of stabbings. Jimmy was regarded as one of Glasgow's most dangerous gangsters. Though Jimmy has changed his life and afforded himself an affluent lifestyle by becoming a sculptor and a published novelist, and splitting his time between France and Morocco, Jimmy's criminal and gangster past cannot be understated. After all, he was jailed for a murder of rival Glasgow gangster William Babs Rooney, a brutal and messy confrontation in which he denied being responsible. Now, due to the trauma of his crimes, Jimmy's sleep was plagued by a number of things. Fear, regret, pain, and solitary confinement in the worst prisons Scotland had to offer, making it impossible for the Gorbals gangster to sleep for more than four hours. Born in 1944 in the Gorbals, Jimmy was one of three brothers. Jimmy's dad was a well-known criminal as well, specialising in opening safes. Jimmy's dad was aimed in a brawl that involved a claw hammer and a blade, and when Jimmy was only 4 years old. Now Jimmy's dad was only 30 years old at the time of his M, and it was said that the aftermath, his face was beyond recognition. Now Jimmy's mum was forced to raise 4 boys on a cleaner's salary, and the Boyle family was said to have been brought up on rabbit stew and bread. Now Jimmy quickly sought refuge in the streets, wanting more, needing more, and in order to ascertain the nicer things, Jimmy started his criminal exploits by joining the Gorbals Notorious Combi Gang, who were famous for extorting businesses and running drinking shabines. At pre-teenagers, Jimmy was known to carry a claw hammer and actually use it. Growing up, Jimmy had an issue with authority, whether that be school, local police officers, and even older teenagers in the area. At 12 years old, Jimmy had attended a plethora of approved schools, Store because his mum caught Jimmy stealing. Now Jimmy was cracking open in vending machines and taking the chocolate and the money. Now Jimmy was first jailed at just 13 years old. Now each time Jimmy was separated from his family and went to an approved school or jail, he had to scrap with other like minded teenagers. He lost what it meant to have a family. He always came back changed and angry. He also learned that he was capable of striking and also stabbing people. Now at 16 years old, Jimmy Boyle was known in the Glasgow area now, firmly a gangster, and then he began to break into the family business on his dad's side by opening safes too. Now Jimmy then traded in a claw hammer for a blade. Now it was also alleged that Jimmy was known to use that blade and would often take to the streets and slice random people in order to show the general public not to cross him under any circumstances. And then at 18 years old, Jimmy became the youngest prisoner in Barlini. By the time Jimmy was 20 years old, he was an enforcer and a moneylender, working as a tallyman. His role was to collect unpaid debt for the combi gang and other people, as long as the price was right. Because the gang was so savage, the interest rates on these loans were 1000%. Now police allege that on one occasion, Jimmy and another enforcer had walked into a man's home in Glasgow broad daylight, uninvited. He owned the combi gang money, so Jimmy told the man to put his face on the table when he was told that he was unable to pay. Jimmy was then handed a razor and a ruler. The victim's face was then marked to the point where scars were permanent. Now, the victim refused to report the incident to the police. In fact, he just vanished, according to Strathclyde Police Chief Constable Sir David McNee. On a separate occasion, Jimmy was said to have told a person to eagle spread when they refused to pay their debt also. And Jimmy placed nails through the palm of hands and the base of feet. Now when Jimmy was wanted for the M, at just 20 years old, Jimmy took an overnight bag and made his way to London, where the Cray twins would put him up and protect him. Now, this is where the M situation comes in. At 23 years old, Jimmy Boyle had attended a party at a pub in Govan. It was 1967. Jimmy was drinking when he was asked to speak to William Babs Rooney, who was a non-criminal and also gangster. Now Babs had borrowed money and had not paid it back yet. He was now late by two payments. 
Babs now owed £7. At the end of the evening, Babs had already gone home. So, Jimmy travelled to Cornwall Street, Kenning Park. He knocked on the door and it was answered by Babs' girlfriend, Sadie Kearney. Jimmy told Sadie to go and get Babs. Now, Babs came to the door. Jimmy told Babs that he owed the money. Babs told Jimmy he needed more time. Now, Jimmy, who was known as Babyface Boyle by the press, had a temper and it is alleged that he pulled out a blade and had stabbed Babs before walking away. However, Jimmy stated on numerous occasions that he was not the one that stabbed William Babs Rooney. It was his friend and co-accused, who was found not guilty at a trial, William Wilson. However, police found the M weapon still stained with red at Jimmy's flat. Now, while in London, Jimmy was picked up by plainclothes officers and then transported back to Scotland to stand trial for the M of William Babs Rooney. Police described the M of William Babs Rooney as one of the most brutal they had seen, from the start points being the face and then the end points being the stomach. At just 23 years old, this was the third time that Jimmy had been on trial for an M. In the two previous situations, the case fell apart after the witnesses who put Jimmy at the scene of the crime, their houses had been set alight and torched. Now, Jimmy Bull was found guilty of the M in 1967 November of William Babs Rooney. The jury just took 35 minutes to find the gangster guilty. Now, before sentencing, the judge called Jimmy Scotland's most dangerous criminal. He was astute, aloof, cunning, and very calm in his demeanour. Now, because Jimmy was so feared, three people were also jailed. That included lawyer James Latter who was found to be guilty of attempting to forcefully sway witnesses. Jimmy was jailed for life, and just two months into the sentence, Jimmy Boyle, who spent his time in four different prisons, including Barlini, had caught the assistant governor of Barlini and broke their cheekbone. 18 months was added onto Jimmy's sentence. Now, apart from spending time in solitary confinement, Jimmy also regularly covered himself in poop to stop prison guards and other prisoners trying to bombard him. However, Jimmy was given a lifeline when he took part in a special unit where he found his love for reading and sculpting. The first taste of real satisfaction, apart from having his children, came when he designed the largest sculpture in Europe called Gulliver for the Craig Miller Festival. Now, tragically, Jimmy's son, James Boyle, who was only 27 years old, was fatally by Glasgow gangster Gary Moore, who already had six M's under his belt. Now, it's no stretch of the imagination to call Jimmy Boyle, aka Babyface, a real dangerous criminal and gangster. However, as I said, he has changed his life around and he's one of the few gangsters that made something of himself and you have to applaud it. Stay safe, safe. <laughs>